Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Keep Connected Friday. So sit down, get comfortable, listen carefully. This week's story is called The Song of the Nightingale, written by Tanya Landman and Laura Carlin. Hope you enjoy it. The earth was young and fresh and full of colour. By day, the golden sun hung in a clear blue sky. Silver streams ran down purple mountains into deep green seas. By night, the moon lay on a quilt of velvet black draped over snow-capped poles. There were burning deserts of yellow and orange and flaming red. Shaded forests were filled with trees and flowers, every color of the rainbow. But the animals, they were dull and drab. And the painter had decided something must be done. She called all the animals together, snakes with scales and fish with tails and pigs with bristly hair, whales that swam and deer that ran and birds that soared through the air. There were wings on the bat and teeth on the rat and claws on the grizzly bear. The queue stretched as far as she could see. It was going to be a very long day. The painter rolled up her sleeves and opened her paint box. She started with the fiddly, wiggly animals, dabbing dots on ladybirds and spots on butterflies. As the morning went on, she slicked stripes on zebras and painted pentagons on giraffes. She popped penguins into sharp suits and furnished with flamingos with feathers of delicate pink. The sun was high in the sky when the painter stopped to rest. The penguins waddled away and plopped into the deep dark seas. Flamingos took to the air a rosy blush across the sky. While the painter watched them, a mandrel sat on her paint box and ended up with a very colorful bottom. The painter went back to work. She'd had enough of fiddly twiddly patterns and so she got out her biggest paintbrush and some enormous pots of paint. She painted crocodiles green and elephants gray and kangaroos red and orangutans orange, lions yellow and whales blue. Four birds kept arguing about which of them had been painted the prettiest color. They squawked and shrieked and bumped into each other, but their paint was still wet. So those four birds got splashes of different color all over them. They became the parrots. <clears throat> the painter worked all day, animal after animal after animal, until she came to the very last in the queue. It was a tiny beetle who had waited patiently for its turn. Because it had stood so quietly for so long, the painter took out a tiny pot of gold paint and that little beetle became the golden scarab. At last, the job was done. The sun was going down and it was starting to get dark. The painter closed up her paint box and rolled down her sleeves. She was just about to go home when out of the shadows of the forest flew a little bird. It had been scared by the noise the animals had made as they queued to be painted, and it didn't like the heat of the bright day. This bird preferred the coolness of evening and the stillness of night. It flew all the way up to the painter and perched on a branch, putting its head on one side and waiting to see what colour it would be. The painter smiled and opened her box but there was no paint left. She had used all the colours on the other animals. There was nothing left for this little bird. Then the painter looked at her brush. There on the tip, right on the very end, was a tiny drop of gold paint. 
The painter asked the bird to open up its beak and she put that drop of gold paint right at the back of its throat. And then the painter asked the little bird to sing. A stream of golden notes tumbled from its throat and flo floated into the night. The song was so lovely it brought tears of joy to the painter's eyes. To this very day, the little bird prefers the coolness of evening and the stillness of night. When the sun goes down and a velvety darkness covers the earth, it comes out to sing with its beautiful golden voice. So we call that little bird the nightingale. I love this story because of the language it uses. I love the adjectives and the verbs. So, particularly like the bit about snakes with scales and fish with tails, grisly, grizzly bears. Why not paint your own animal? Choose any colours you like and make it something that makes you smile. Take a picture of it and send it to Joe on my email. Keep safe, everyone. See you all soon. If not for next, keep the story next Friday. Bye-bye.